at this time, it's uh, my honor and privilege to um, introduce again uh, our sound recordings curator here, um, Jerry Fabris, uh, who's going to lead us in the next portion of our program. So Jerry, please come up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad this all worked out. <laughs> We're all here. <laughs> I began working here in 1990. I was right out of uh, undergraduate with a history bachelor's degree. Uh, had a great love for history, great interest in sound and audio. And I was told that this was the book to read, uh, the, the old standby history of, of recorded sound from tinfoil to stereo by, by Walter Welch and Oliver Reed. It has a big photo of Edison on, on even before page one. And Edison is mentioned all throughout the book. On page six is a photo of Leon Scott de Martinville's phonautograph. And it says, Leon Scott's phonautograph, an early forerunner of modern phonograph, could, resort, re could record sound but not reproduce it. And that just struck me as, whoa, that's a big question mark. That looks a lot like the phonograph, a lot like the phonograph. It could record sound, but there are only a few sentences about him in this book. So, so many questions, so many questions I've had in my mind about this for so many years. And it, so it makes me happy today we're, we're beginning to answer these questions. So, so that's why I'm happy. Uh, all right, I want to just give you a, a quick overview of the rest of the day here. Um, up until 3 o'clock, before 3 o'clock, we're going to hear um, from David Giovanoni and Patrick Feaster about their, their, their great uh, recent research to help us understand who Leon Scott de Martinville was. And at 3 o'clock, we're going to take a break, half-hour break. We'll have refreshments in the back. Um, the, the restrooms are down the stairs and to your right. Uh, after the break... Laurent Scott de Martinville is going to tell us um, about his great grandfather from a family perspective. And then we're going to have a couple previews of a, a new biography of Leon Scott de Martinville and a new film documentary. Uh, and then I think the really exciting part um, Patrick Feaster is going to lead a discussion um, titled Edison's Path to the Phonograph What Did He Know and When Did He Know It? Um, and uh, David is going to be the discussion moderator, and we have this wireless microphone, so we'd like to, to ask questions, uh, hand around the microphone, and have an open discussion. And then in the end is the fun, the real fun. We are going to demonstrate these two machines, this, this uh, phonograph, uh, Leon Scott de Martinville's 1857 design, and then uh, an Edison tinfoil phonograph here. So we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate them both so we can really see how they work and understand how they work. So let me first introduce David Giovanoni. J David Giovanoni retired from his day job to pursue his passion for very old sound recordings. David is a founder of the First, of the first Sounds Initiative with its mission to make the earliest sound recordings available to everyone. First Sounds is best known for identifying and playing back Edward Leon Scott de Martinville's phone autograph recordings made in Paris 20 years before Edison invented the phonograph. Two years ago, he shepherded Scott's recording legacy, humanity's first recordings of his own voice, onto UNESCO's prestigious Memory of the World Register. The Library of Congress has incorporated part of his early disc collection into its online national jukebox, and the Librarian of Congress has placed his collection of wax cylinder home recordings on the prestigious National Recording Registry. David produces historic reissues, such as the Bicentennial Tribute Booklet we've all received today. He's recipient of a Grammy and six additional Grammy nominations. David, David uh, helped 
helped me put together the, the exhibit and, and did the first draft of the text and uh, also helped me a great deal in bringing this all together. So welcome, David. <laughs>